it's um, we're discussing the Yudinji or, or the creation of the Yudinji, yeah. or the not the creation but the revitalization of Yudinji of the Yudinji. Yeah, the Yudinji people. And um, the, look, the reason why I I um, want to speak to Peter about this or your tribal name, if you which is Ganyara, yes. yeah, Ganyara Yamba, yeah, is that um, the governments that we've got at the moment. Us should be upholding certain uh, laws and rules or what have you and because we are starting to discover that such governments may not be upholding their uh, end of the bargain you could say uh, this is um, this is what is the cause or maybe the cause of, of looking at the, 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 the governments that may have been here prior to the to the uh, colonial governments that, that, that arrived in you know 200 years ago yeah. but if you'd um, I guess just explain a little bit, about the um, the Yudinji tribal government. Um. Um, well, we've got to go back to basically the Yudinji people. Yeah. Um, and they're, they're a tribal people. There's two ways of doing this. We can look at it from a Bible's perspective, or we can look at it from the our perspective. A Bible perspective, if you go to Babylon, where they destroyed the tower and threw all the tribes out, and one tribe ended up here. So you use the Bible to say, that's why we're here. So it's their law book or their re religious law book that says there's a tribe here scattered across the earth. But in saying that, we knew we were here all along. We never needed their Bible to tell us that we've been here for 20, 30, 40,000 years because our law book, our religious law book, which has the god of Guppy, God Barra Guppy down here and Guppy Gimby from Yumba Way, yeah. as the god, which is the god in the Bible. So if we're the creation of God, God's children, as per the Bible, same here. We're Guppy's children. So we've always been here. The, the people have always been here and looked after the place. And they've had a form of government all along. The government was that, for example, there were lawmen that upheld the law of the tribe. So those lawmen went out as police officers. And they brought the offender back to the tribal courts, which are the equivalent to the courts. So there has always been a government here. However, about 18 or 1788, a group of um, a, a group of colonialists or British come out here to impose their government and their law on us, which we've always had. It, um, would that be like an administrative government over the top, or they they were kings and queens at the time? However, they turned up in a corporate uh, disguise. Yeah, that's right. So you didn't really see them as the corporate uh, entity, but you saw them as men coming in and just taking over. They come in for the commercial purpose of making money. And God said, don't go and make money out of my country. You know, you use right. it as a usufructory right. So you, if you have this usufruct, you can take my stuff and use it for your own advantage now, but you've got to leave some for someone else. Yeah. So that's basically a usufruct. I, God owns it, you don't. So you can use it, but always remember God owns it. But the, when they come in here, they didn't ask if they could come in. They just sort of marched in with the, with the gun, you know, and we'll just keep chasing them back, herding them back, hoping they would die. And that was one of the statements that was made um, in about 1890, 95. They didn't even want to include the Aboriginal people in the Constitution because they thought they were such an inferior low race. They'd all be dead within the next 50 years. So the six colonies come and formed, you know, there was New South Wales, Queensland, Victoria, South Australia, West Australia and Tasmania. And people ask, where was the Northern Territory? Well, that was South Australia back then. It was right one big piece. Um, but those six states decided to federate, to join up, to save, recreate, and in every state, their own system of government, which it was, our colonial governments, um, set up under the Queen's rules. So it's just a foreign rule. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, she, yeah my word, she is. Mm. She's out of over there. And I know the tribes over in England... Well, the land known as England, they're the tribes there that just put out boats everywhere and we'll go and sail the seven seas, plunder resources, um, just like the Portuguese, Spanish, Dutch, yeah. all that. But the Udinji people had been trading all along for the last 10,000 years with Egyptians and Romans. You know, there's Egyptian artefacts here, chariot wheels, uh, Roman helmets in caves, you know, within Udinji country. You can go and see them to this very day. They haven't been taken by the British yet. It's also something that's not really widespread um, 
we're not told about these no, uh, artifacts no. have been found. No, 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 no. That's, that's just your dingy property. Yeah. Just like having a museum in England or down in Brisbane or Canberra, we've got our own. So we've got all our stuff, you know, our stuff has been here, there's still the old tribal shield and stuff still there. But in saying that, to understand why your dingy's doing what it's doing, you've got to have a look at an act that was written in 2013 by, call it a better word, administration. Um, the government is not a government because your dingy is. The Commonwealth of Australia is an administrator and they'll admit to it. In, in a form of a corporate administrator corporation type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, an administration can't be anything other than a corporate entity. Yeah, that's right. If you're in administration, for example, like you're in a bankruptcy, so you're under administration, it has to be another company that administers. That's right. So it has to be companies, mm -hmm. not, it's not ecclesiastical level sovereignty stuff. They, those people can't administer something else for someone, for someone else. Yeah. So in saying that, um, we'll go to what Julia... Uh, Gillard said in 2012 um, we hold this in trust for a sovereign people so she was saying that the government don't own it, that was at the miners meeting in 2012 yeah, she said we hold this in trust so that means there is a trust, there is an administration there are trustees, she's actually admitting it yeah, my word, and she said we hold this in trust for a sovereign people, they own it the sovereign people own the country, mm -hmm. not the government even the government said they don't own it so if that's the case then they have to be administrators. They can't be a government. They are the government of the trustees to make sure that those trustees who are employed by the administration are doing the right thing to supply benefit to the beneficiaries being the sovereign people. And this is even backed up by the Judge Dowsett. Um oh, yeah, yeah, my word, my word. Because Justice Dowsett in the federal court, now he's done three native title determinations up here. Mm. There was a Munding Alpike and Gandhi combined determination and there was a two table end Yidinji determination. And in those, in the table in Yidinji ones, he makes it very clear. He said, I come here today to give you nothing. This is where he's <laughs> handing down his thing to the, the determination to the, to the Yidinji people. I come here to give you nothing. I, all they can give them is recognition. As he said, the Yidinji people own this land pursuant to their law. Their law has got roots in ancient times. So he said that the Yidinji people aren't Australians, for a start. He said they own the land, which is second, and they have another law system which, which is older than Australia's. So you think about what he's saying. He said this group of people, not the Australians, own the land that Australia think they own under their own law, which is not Australian law. Mm. Just think about that for a minute. What, what was actually said? So if the Yudinji own it, what do Australians own? If Yudinji have their law, what do Australians have? You know, this, this is monumental. But that's backed up further by saying in 2013 that an act was passed, the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander People Recognition Act 2013 was passed in March, 18th of March 2013, where it said that the Yidinji or the Aboriginal people aren't yet in the Constitution. Now, you've got to remember the Constitution created Justice Dowse and the Federal Court. So if these people aren't in the Constitution, can they see Justice Dowse or the Federal Court? Or is their law still here? These other people with their law that own the place that are not in the Constitution yet. So the Constitution, so you've got to go back then as to how the Constitution got here. And that's why we're talking about the six states federated and come together. Under, and they want to have a Constitution, so to do that, you've got to have a rule book that lays out the whole plan. Everything's put out before you. The Constitution creates the, the courts, the judiciary. It creates the executive, which is the law enforcement or the workers for the administration and it creates the legislative side of it which makes the laws that the executive enforce and are upheld by the courts, by the judiciary. And uh, just about the constitution. Well okay, we've got to get back to where the constitution is created and what it actually does. Yeah. The, the constitution is the rule book that creates the Commonwealth of Australia. Once you understand that, everything else derives out of the constitution. If you go there it looks at in the Constitution and read it properly, and it's a good document, it creates the legislative side, mm. the, the Parliament, the Senate, the House of Reps. So it creates Prime Minister, it creates Governor General, it creates Senators. So if it creates them and they make the laws, it also then must create the judiciary that enforces the laws. So 
you look there once again it creates the high court that can hear the ending about yeah. the constitution but it also creates all those acts underneath that are enforced by the judiciary so have a look at birth deaths and marriages act have a look at citizenship act have a look at the currency act all this is all created the banking act the all the criminal codes the crimes act they're all created subject to the constitution so that's the founding legal document everything else rests upon however you dingy weren't allowed in. In 1899 at the referendum, they actually in Queensland and West Australia excluded groups of people and one were the Aboriginal people here. The Queen couldn't make laws from prior to that because the Pacific Island Protection Act clearly says in section 6 and 7, mainly 7, that she would not, she could not create any laws for these people. She had no sovereignty or dominion and that was in the Pacific Island Protection Act 1875. So section 7, then in section six of that, she said she has control over her British subjects. So, she, so that's all she had. But she didn't have any control over the Aboriginal people. That's reflected in the Constitution, in section 5126, where it clearly says that, you know, at 51 as to for good government and order and peace, they can make laws for all this. 26, for any race except the Aboriginal people. So that stood in place up until 1967 referendum when they just struck it out, so they could make laws for any race. However, up until 67, the Yudinji people were excluded from the Constitution, and they, but they weren't included in the Constitution in 67. It just said the government could not make laws for them. So if they can't make laws for peace, order and good governments for Yudinji, when do they actually obtain it? Have they obtained it? Um, then you go to section 127 of that, the, the Constitution says, and reckon on the numbers of the Commonwealth that they shall not count the Aboriginal natives. So they weren't even counted in the Constitution in the first place. Now, if you have a look at the original Constitution, Victoria 63, 64, uh, to this very day, those two amendments have never been put into that document. They can't because that's a British Act. It's a, it's a Queen's Act. Why is there another one, 1901, that is amended? So you've got Victoria 63, 64, which is the 1900 Constitution, British Act, then you've got the Australian one that is all amended at every referendum when they got it through they amended the constitution, yet the other one is entire and it's intact. So that clearly says the Australians aren't British subjects now. What happened there? Where did they go? Where did they remove the British out of the Australian? So, and how did that one come into being I wonder? Well, no, this, this other one was created in 1901. You'll actually go on the government website and see yeah. Yeah. that Australia was created in 1901. Not 1900, not all this League of Nations stuff, 1919, it was created in 1901. That's the birth certificate, is the Constitution. So they run two sets of books, basically up until the Statute of Westminster Act, uh, 31, or 32, it was, or 31, and then the Adoption Act of 1942. So the Statute of Westminster Adoption Act, 1942, removed the Queen out of the Federal Parliament. However, there were still six colonies on paper that still had a Queen in it a real queen out of England. But that was removed with the Australia Act, um, 1986, UK and Commonwealth. So that took the queen completely out. So we have some form of statutory queen. Yeah, yeah, why would you got a paper queen? When she comes here, she puts on her, she takes off her English crown and puts on her Australian crown and walks in. So she's not the defender of the faith there. See, the, the original queen in England if you have a look at her title this very day, she's a defender of the faith, which is the Church of England, or um, I wouldn't call it Anglican because that's the modified version here. It's the Church of England. There's only two churches in England that are Church of England, and one's uh, Canterbury. But if she's a defender of the faith under her Bible, which she took an oath on in 1952, which is the King James 1611 Bible, which has got the royal arms in it, it actually says in there that you know, you don't go and steal someone else's place. You don't take their land or any of their stuff and plunder it. So in, in saying that, she had to leave. But in 1960, um, the UN, which was in power by then, mm. passed Resolution 1514, I think it was 1960, said the Queen must decolonise. And when you've got to understand what a colony is, a colony is a plantation of British subjects. So, she, so they effectively said to the Queen, pack up all your junk and go. Get out of Australia because it's one of your colonies. Canada was one of the colonies. Uh, South Africa, Hong Kong, get out. Go back to where you belong. 
Um, that then started to take place. Um, there was another one, Resolution 26, 25, 25 in 1970, if I can remember right, October 1970, which was along the same lines. Take your stuff and go. Let, let the people be free that are there. So they were free. When she left, they were free. But they had to take the monarchy, the real queen, out of all the statutory stuff. And that's what Australia Act 86 was all about. So it condensed the, the six or seven queens back into one and then took her out. So now you have a look at all the stuff. The queen that comes here is not the defender of the faith. She's not the defender of the Bible. She can't be. Because it's an administration and a statutory paper world. So she can't be in the real world of ecclesiastical law, which is Bible, while she's here. Yeah, is it the reason about the um, United States Security, Securities and Exchange Commission with all the uh, registration of the... Well, every, everything is under administration at present until they work out what's going to happen from all the past uh, colonisation from both the Dutch, the Spanish, the Portuguese, the, everyone being out plundering the world. Now they've got to try and sort it all out. So it's all held in trust. So they've got to be all held by administration. Um, if you have a look on the SEC, um, People's Republic of China is listed on there. Yes. You know, these are nations. Now that's a nation that they think is separate to America, but it's registered in America on the US SEC. Yeah. Rather bizarre thing for China to be registered in America. Yeah, so it's all one world, all that administration is one thing of the UN. The UN is the master administrator of this one world, one government type of stuff, under administration. However, you didn't, you were never part of that. Had nothing to do with it. They were excluded in the first place. They were told that the black people in Queensland and in West Australia were not allowed to take part in the referendums for the constitution. No, no voting. So, yeah, we were excluded. Even in the Franchise Act of 1902, Section 4, it says no Aboriginal native shall have his name put on the roll to vote. Once again, kept out. So we go forward to 2013 now, where they wrote this Recognition Act. Now they're going to put a proposal, which is an act of the future, to the Australian people, which is one lot of people, to constitutionally recognise another lot of people. So we've got two lots of people now. But these people that aren't yet recognised in the Constitution own the place. They're the Yidinji one. That's what Justice Dowser said. These Aboriginal people own the land. If they own it, what do these own? What do the Australians own? Nothing. So can Australia enforce their laws on us? When our law is first in time and still here, Justice Dowsett once said that the Yidinji people, now, now this is in the Munding Alpha Gunganji Yidinji determination, that the Yidinji people have a system of land tenure. They have a system of authority and decision making. They've got a system of dispute resolution. Hang on a sec, doesn't that sound like government courts and all the stuff that Australia claimed to have? If Justice Dowsett then said that and bound all Australians to it, didn't bind us. He couldn't bind us because we're not in the court, we're not in the constitution. We're not there. We own it. So would this mean that um, the Yidinji have a right to actually reform a true de jure lawful government? Well, we'll go to the UN document. Um, UN, the United Nations Declaration of Rights for Indigenous People, uh, Article 5. It says that the, the uh, Indigenous people have a right to revitalise all their institutions, be it court, police, whatever, whilst they also can retain a right, if they so choose, to take part in the life of the state. Mm. So if they don't choose to take part in the life of the state, which is Australia, we can stay where we are under our own government, under our dispute resolution system, our court. We can create whatever we want that we had a thousand years ago, two thousand, ten thousand years ago. Who's the government, or the administrator, to say we can't? Where does it say in their paperwork we can't do it? I want someone to show me that. Where do they say? Because we're only quoting what they say to us. Yeah. So do they have the legal capacity? Because they can't yet see us. Remember, we're not yet uh, recognised in the Constitution. They can't legally see us yet. Do they have the right to tell us anything? Well, if they see someone... They see a man. And they see a man that's not inside their... Um, that's not pledged surety for their person. Yeah. yeah their, their birth certificate person. Th then, technically, they should not touch you. They should leave you alone. My word. Otherwise, they invoke our law. Yeah, but this is not really happening at the moment because um, a lot of the... Could, could you say it's the ignorance of the administrator actually assumes that they are... Um, legitimate government and 
are making these mistakes? They assume that what what basically what they're doing they're using might and not right. Yeah. They, they just try. They, they they know there's something wrong. That's why they wrote the Recognition Act. They definitely know there's. Um, if you read what uh, Tony Abbott said in February 2012, he said we should have done a treaty like Waitangi. The constitution is not yet complete. He said this should have been done 100 or 200 years ago. So if their constitution is not complete, for a start, I wouldn't join it until it is complete, full disclosure of the terms and conditions. Mm. But secondly, he's saying that this should have been done back when they excluded the Yidinji people. So as we're not included in there. So that was his words out of his mouth, and you can go and look up the Hansard uh, yeah. stuff. Yeah. It's there. 